Odere la Maranaya, a family story behind a bottle. Buongiorno Paola, I never been here. It's the first time for me, you know that I live in San Gimignano, but I'm imported. <laughs> so, can you explain a little bit about uh, this hidden jewel of San Gimignano? Yes, yeah, so this is a, a unique idea of two brothers, Michelangelo and Raffaello Rubino, and they have been working for three years. Their mission was uh, to recreate how the village was uh, in the medieval time. So there has been uh, a lot of research, a lot of document studying, and um, a lot of materials, a lot of uh, terracotta, and uh, baking, and painting. And uh, um, we start with the uh, San Giovanni Gate, uh, which is still exists today. Uh, this is one of the entrance, as you can see. And despite today, there were many more kitchen garden because they were farmers, the people, and they used to live with what they produced at that time. Look, especially along the wall. They were producing their tomato, their um, grape, uh, artichoke, and to everything. But and it um, was um, a country, a countryside village, of course. And this is uh, correspond, as everybody knows, uh, to the pilgrim route at the same time, but the pilgrims knew they could stop here. They were, they could host it. They were hosted by the locals. Uh, people feed them. They could exchange horses at the same time. And remember, Victoria, 72 were the towers Towers. originally, and they tried to, they've tried here to recreate them all, because today we only have 14 left. And um, this is uh, the San Domenico convent that doesn't exist anymore. So if you want to have an idea how it used to be, you have to come here. Museo of 1300, that's how we call it today. And uh, this is correspond to La Rocca di Montesacoli, yes. what we are going later. And that's very interesting to recognize how these were the first belt, these were the first walls, how San Gimignano was small. It's a small villa today, but originally it was even smaller. Mm -hmm. And included the Duomo, of course, the Torre Grossa, the main square, but that was it. And uh, as we have San Giovanni Gate, then we have the other half of the village. This is uh, San Matthew Gate. So, dedicated to two out of the four evangelists, of course. And not to be missed uh, is the, the Sant'Agostino Convent uh, sure. with beautiful frescoes by Benozzo Gozzoli inside. It's another um, corner another dedicated yeah. to a Florentine painter, mm -hmm. Benozzo Gozzoli, that together with Ghirlandaio came from Florence extra here. And there was no aqueduct back then. People that got their water from the well, from the cistern. I have um, uh, the main square yeah, is uh, the cistern square. square. There is a difference, you know, Vittoria, because uh, usually the well you have it downhill and uh, you have the cistern on top because it's a really deposit that you sure. have. And the video, I would like to introduce you to the video because this is actually uh, all the people that have been uh, working to this amazing project uh, is um, a very challenging one uh, and it's really worth to come to visit this small museum. And it's very close to the city center so in just a few steps. It's right next to the drama practically and uh, it's interesting are all the flag about the different contradas, the, those are four here yes. in San Gimignano. You have the angel that represent um, uh, San Matthew, you have Il Castello, the castle, Contrada, you have um, La Piazza, La Piazza, the square, <laughs> Contrada, and the one we, uh, we came from, San Giovanni, wow. represented by the eagle that you yes. have. And talking about the pilgrims and the Via Francigena, there is an interesting map uh, here so that I'd like to introduce you because the pilgrims started 
from um, Scotland, Ireland, England, that they gather here at the beautiful, famous Cathedral of Canterbury. Yes. And through France and France, uh, that gave the name to the pilgrim route, Francigena yeah, today, sure. they all went through the Alps uh, and was mandatory to walk through Tuscany. And uh, in Tuscany was uh, Luca San Gimignano Siena before to arrive to Rome because uh, this was uh, their mission, Rome and for those that they could continue Jerusalem afterwards. So these people, they knew when they left, they didn't know when they were coming back. It, time was not an issue. It took them years, practically. And um, these people, they had money. They were not poor pilgrims. So the fact that San Gimignano was along the pilgrim route was um, economically very positive because uh, the trading started with them. The first people traveled were for religious yes. reasons only. Sure. And uh, you, ha you have to consider that uh, these uh, people exchange their money, they spend their money here, and um, that's what the tourists do today. Yes. Practically. <laughs> and I would like to show you how there is a, a tower um, that doesn't exist anymore which is um, because collapse, because, um, and uh, without that tower, you have now the Cistern Square, Square. Si. and it's the Ridolfi Tower, that you have it right there, with this beautiful balcony painted in blue and pink. This is um, an interesting section of how a medieval towers look like. Very simple, plain, very thick walls because this is the structure needed to support everything these heavy towers there's a very thick uh, stone that you have but the inside is leftover materials uh, anything they could have uh, find to fill in inside and this is where the family lived and there is no entrance to the tower from the main street but you could go in from one to the other side from the first floor only. This is to give more difficulties to the enemy to get inside, just the family uh, could go in. And if they could afford, they hire soldiers to defend their own family uh, from the top. Otherwise, uh, uh, the family itself, they did it. And um, there are simply staircases, as you can see. That's how the towers of San Gimignano and all the other medieval towers in Italy, they look like. And um, the towers, they have the name of the family that built it. And um, this is the reason why your neighbors always try to have a higher of your own ones because uh, they slowly became a status, a symbol of wealth. And so if my towers is higher than yours, uh, that meant that I was wealthier than you were. And um, you have um, the uh, interesting um, family in San Gimignano, uh, which is uh, Salvucci, um, they didn't build just one for their own family, they built it two. So we have uh, still today the twin towers of San Gimignano.